patience, persistence, and discipline. Fishing requires great patience, persistence, and discipline. Do I say it in another way? Soul winning requires great patience, persistence, and discipline. Like fishing, soul winning requires great patience, persistence, and discipline. Wrapped up with genuine compassion. Oh, you must add that one. Soul winning is a game without compassion. Compassion is what makes soul winning authentic. Not ministry. Compassion. Are we learning? Ephesians chapter 2, please, from verse 1 to 6. I have a very strong message here. And I believe this will help to support the strengthening of the body of Christ. Soul winning like fishing requires great patience, discipline, persistence, wrapped up with compassion. Can I tell you this? Sometimes the reason why we don't catch fish is that we get to the sea with such anger. The sea, we make it so boisterous, the fish run away. And by the time we throw the nets, there is nothing to catch. There is a skill to catching fish. Sometimes silence is the skill. You drop the nets there and you keep quiet and endure. Then the fish come and you catch them. Our impatience with the world of the unsaved is one of the reasons why they run away. Are we together now? I think that there is a growing hatred for the unbelieving world and it ought not to be so. God never called us to hate on people simply because they are not spiritual. It's a dangerous orientation. You cannot hate somebody, verbalize and vocalize your hatred, then wants the person to be saved. No. An unsaved person is not necessarily a failure. An unsaved person is just one whose eternal destiny is not yet in place. But as far as our world is concerned, an unsaved person can be a very successful person. Don't downplay their results. You cannot hate on a people and want them to be saved. No. Are we together? The level of anger and aggression that we communicate towards the unbelieving world, in my opinion, and respectfully so, I think is too harsh to bring that fish to our nets. Now, we are not calling to the ministry of condoning just whatever, but there's something you need to know about an unsaved person. An unsaved person is under the influence of the prince of the power of the air. Give us Ephesians 2. Let me show you something. Ephesians 2, please, from verse 1. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses. Did you see that? Dead in what? Trespasses and sin. That is the state of an unsaved person. Verse 2. When in time past, Paul was reminding the church in Ephesus that once upon a time you were like this too. Ye walked according to the cause of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now, now currently walks in the children of disobedience. There is a spirit that makes the unsaved behave the way they behave. Are we together? They are not just doing it. They have their will. But that will has been hijacked and manipulated. When you look at an unsaved person from this lens, it will plant compassion, not hatred. Verse 3. Among whom we also had our conversation in time past. Watch this. Fulfilling the lust of our flesh and fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature, naturally, children of wrath, even among others. Verse 4, hallelujah. But God, who is rich in what? Not rich in power. 
when it has to do with the business of the fishing man, mercy must precede power. When you have power without mercy, you will use it to trouble the sea and you will drive. It takes power to trouble the sea, but it takes your mercy to be patient, knowing that the fish are under, in this case, the war, unbelieving world. They are under an influence that is greater than them. If they could help themselves, Jesus would not come to die. But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, verse 5, even when we were dead in sins, watch this, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. Verse 6, the Bible says, and had raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places. Let me tell you the truth. By the privilege of God's grace, I am a soul winner. I've been in this business of soul winning for many, many years. This is one area I can tell you by mercy that I understand. And some of the greatest harvests that have come came through compassion, not power. Compassion. There are people serving in this ministry today. If you saw us at the time they were saved, you will not believe that God could turn Saul to Paul. Are we together now? Venting out hatred venting out anger and annoyance against an unbelieving world listen to me you are anytime you begin to communicate a sense of self-righteousness you lose that ability to reach sinners everybody was a sinner in iniquity did my mother conceive me let us not forget how god saved us there are two things i want to tell you to help you and i believe this extends to the body of christ if you have been guilty in an area of sin before, be careful how you speak about it now that you are saved. The fact that you were a victim, there were others who were free while you were a victim. Since mercy saved you, never forget that you could not help yourself. It was mercy that saved you. Extend the same. There is a way a once victim should not speak. Did you hear what I said? This is spiritual maturity. Once you have been a victim of any major aspect of sin or life, even if you repent, there is a way you cannot speak again. Mercy must be before you. Because if you could help yourself, while you were in that rut, there were those who were free, but they gave you a chance to discover. Give other people a chance to. Sometimes we forget how God helped us and we stand in self-righteousness and begin to shout and say all kinds of things. I repeat this and let Christ hear. If you were once in any rot or in any sin and God helped you, even though you are helped now, I am saying it, there is a way you cannot preach again. The fact that you were once Saul, now that you have become Paul, you see, you are saved by grace, but that innocence has gone. There are certain things you cannot say again. You remain an advocate of compassion for the rest of your life. You are the one that we praise. You are the one we adore. You give the healing and grace that our hearts always have. Oh, I'm Hallelujah. Listen, you were a thief before you repented. Be mindful how you talk to thieves. You were immoral before you repented. Be mindful how you talk to immoral people. You were in anger before you repented. Be mindful that you were a victim of it should plant a greater compassion. Because if you could not help yourself, you should be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity, even more than those who were innocent. An Ambroba who has become saved should not preach to an Ambroba as if he never was once. No. Is someone becoming mature now? You were once a prostitute, with all due respect. Yes, I know that Rahab changed, but once upon a time you were a prostitute. So when you see a prostitute, don't tell her what a, what a shame. You are in prostitution. Don't do that. 
you were once there it was the intercession of compassionate people that brought you to a point where the hand of God could reach you are we learning now yes. you were once an irresponsible father clearly irresponsible but now God has helped you the next time you see an irresponsible father draw from your pain I know what it feels this is the reason why when Jesus became a man you see when he went up to heaven he didn't stop intercession I know what it means to be on earth and to be persecuted I know what it means to be betrayed so when he sits at the right hand of the father he does not point fingers as saying ah you are supposed to preach as a preacher why are you tired it's an embarrassment he knew he will remember when he fell on the way to Golgotha we have not a high priest who has not been touched this is the part of the ministry of the body we need to restore there are many people who have been victims of yesterday and this is not a call for condemnation but that in your conversion do not forget the abundance of mercy that helped you give others a chance it's not only Saul that became Paul there are others too even Demas if he repents he can find life is someone learning there are many wounded people in the body of Christ who have great grace upon their lives. We must be very careful. There are many younger people rising. They may make mistakes with their lives. Please do not misunderstand me. We are never given the mandate to endorse or condone sin. No. But I can tell you, with all due respect, you see, when it has to do with this issue of sin and righteousness, ba, just leave it to God, though. You only talk about the one you know. Huh? With all due respect, you see in our world today, people who have been many years in ministry, some of them are sincerely coming out to say, look, I can't live a false life again. I've been living like this for 30 years. Say experience. Say experience. Say it again. 30 years in ministry is experience, but it does not immune you. It's only God that knows the true state of everybody. The day Jesus will come back, there will be surprises surprises are we together there are many seas today that don't have fish around there again you know why people came with power and self-righteousness a man who was once an irresponsible man now for instance God has helped you you have repented you are now a responsible man, husband to your wife. When you are talking to another irresponsible man, don't forget you were once there. Don't trouble the sea so much that the fish will run away and you are wondering why the net is not catching anything. It's the reason why sinners don't come to church again because it has become an aggressive place of hostility. We will preach against sin, we will preach against unrighteousness, but not from a standpoint of self-perfection. Because by the righteousness of the law, the righteousness of ourselves, nobody can stand before God. Hallelujah. There are many wounded people today in the body of Christ. They cannot run anywhere to find help. Do you know why? Because everywhere has become a place with a sword. One time Peter removed the sword and Jesus told him, put your sword back. Now is not the time for swords. We need to be careful. We need to be careful. Again, I remind you, when it has to do with the business of working on yourself, whether you are Zebedee, you are John, or you are James, sit down and mend your nets. Are we together? We've driven many, many, many fishes. Let me tell you, soul winning requires great patience great patience I've studied many revivals and sometimes it is amazing how many people keep interceding over these lands for years until fire finally falls how many of you know that there are women who have prayed for their children and for 10 15 years they kept in